everyone, and welcome to Behind the Nail Pros for the May 2014 issue. This month, Frances Mangano did the nails for our cover. However, English is not her first language, so I'm here to take you through the steps for her nail design. Frances began by prepping the nails, by pushing back the cuticles, and then removing any excess residue from the nail plate. Once the nails were prepped and ready to go, she applied forms. Now, these nails were extra, extra long, so Frances had to use an extra long form. When working with extra long forms, it's important to get them fitted onto the nail just right. So Frances suggests cutting out the hyponychium area to make sure it fits the nail properly. Once the forms were applied, Frances went in with cover pink powder and started at the cuticle and guided the powder to create an extended nail plate. Next, Frances went in to create the stiletto shape. She used white, yellow, and blue acrylic powder to extend the free edge. Once she got the stiletto shape that she wanted, she then went in with clear acrylic and capped the entire design. You have to be extra careful when filing super long nails like this. Frances's tip is to be very careful when applying your product. If you apply excess product, you're gonna to have to do a lot more filing and when filing extra long nails, you have a greater chance of breaking the nail. Frances first used a 100-150 grit file to start shaping the nail. She used her other hand to support the nail while she was adding filing pressure. While filing the free edge, she would brace the nail where the extension met the natural nail to give them more support. While the nails themselves were really cool and very long, one of the most exciting parts of these nails were all the flowers that were created on top of them. For some of the flowers, Frances sculpted the acrylic directly onto the nail. She used a medium dry ball of white acrylic to sculpt leaves and flower petals. For some of the flowers, she started building them on a form and then applied them to the nails afterwards. What was interesting about Frances's technique was that she sculpted all of the flower petals and leaves with white acrylic. Then she went in and used a very wet consistency of acrylic to paint the flowers with almost a watercolor looking technique. By doing this, she created more depth to the flower colors. If she were to just simply sculpt the petals with red or yellow acrylic, you're gonna get a very solid color. She could, of course, use a double loaded brush technique, but even then, she's not gonna achieve the same depth of color that she would by using this watercolor technique. Frances says that this technique allows you to create transparent color as well as darker shadows to give a more realistic look to your flowers. For some of the other flowers, she constructed them on a form instead of on the nail plate. Frances would use blue acrylic to apply a really thin layer of acrylic onto a form in an oval shape. Then, before it was completely dry, she used the edge of her brush to sort of work along the edges and very carefully lift it off the form. Using the edge of her brush, she would slowly and carefully shape the petal into a curved formation. And then, while it was still wet, she would apply it directly onto the nail, using the remnants of the liquid in the acrylic petal to adhere it to the nail plate. This is a technique that I really haven't seen too much done before and obviously takes quite a bit of practice. For some of the more extravagant looking flowers and of course the little hummingbird, Frances had created these ahead of time. But it's the same principle where you're starting a little piece at a time, working on a form and then letting it dry and building on top of it. For nail techs who'd like to try their hand at this type of technique, Frances recommends working with an excellent quality acrylic powder as well as a great monomer that has a slow activation time for better polymerization. For nail techs who are a little more comfortable working with sculpting 3D acrylic, you might want to try your hand at sculpting with white acrylic and then practicing the watercolor technique where she used color acrylic at a very wet consistency to sort of watercolor the paint onto the flowers. For Francis, the most difficult part about creating this set of nails was really creating the butterfly, which again was created with a very, very thin layer of acrylic and the very delicate hummingbird because both of these things had very teeny tiny parts to them and she really had to focus on the shape of the butterfly and the hummingbird and the details to ensure that it was in correct proportion. That being said, the relationship between the flowers and the hummingbird were also her favorite part. And getting that little hummingbird's beak to attach into the center of that flower was no easy task. 
It took a lot of patience, a steady hand, and some tough acrylic to get that bird's beak stuck inside that little flower. Once completed, this was an outstanding set of nails that we had a great time shooting. I think that the final result was so beautiful. For those of you who would like to learn how to do this sort of technique, education is key. So Francis recommends trying to find classes nearby and practicing on your own. There's so much to learn by watching videos such as this one and other tutorials on YouTube. Practice is key and education is even more important. I think that Francis did a beautiful job, showcased some very unusual techniques, and created an amazing set of nails. So we thank her very much for coming in and spending the time to create these nails. I think you're all really going to enjoy them.